Hey everybody, welcome back to Stuck With Seven. Today we're stuck with one, me. <laughs> no, but today is my solo episode. So I wanted to make sure that we would be doing something like super fun and interesting that you all would like. So I got all my co-hosts to send me like little like prompts for like what they're like looking for in books. And today I'm gonna do a list of book recommendations based on their prompts. So our friend Grace asked me to recommend a book that is like inspirational and will like really get us moving. So for you, Grace, I recommend A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This book tells the intertwined stories of Nao, a teenager in Japan, and Ruth, an author living in the Pacific Northwest who finds Nao's diary like years after she's written it. It like plays with like the relationship between like reader and author in like really like interesting metatextual ways. This book really got me thinking about like my place in the universe and like how I make a difference or like don't make a difference and how that is like like a macrocosm of like every interaction that I have and how I'm constantly being like pushed and pulled by forces bigger than me because I am like such a small part of like the cosmos and also just because I'm like a young person in a society and like that really made me question like how and where I'm putting my energy and like what the point of all this like effort and exhaustion and unhappiness all the time is and like why we keep going like this book is like a super like profound and moving experience and like it will really get you to like look at and think about things differently and if that's not inspiring I don't know what is so Grace here's a book for you now, Whitney wanted like a biography of someone like important, like something you can like learn from. And while I think that is like super noble, I did want to make sure that we're all still having some fun. So I decided to kind of like split the difference between like intellectually stimulating and like enjoyable. So for Whitney, I am recommending by Grand Central Station, I Sat Down and Wept by Elizabeth Smart. The main thing I love about this book is that Smart's words are just so beautiful. Because, like, she manages to communicate, like, her desire and, like, pain and her sadness and elation so, like, like, I don't even know, like, what the words are to, like, describe the words that she uses. It is just, like, so beautiful. I love the, like, motion and ferocity of this book. So, like, if you're looking for, like, a fun escape, this book will totally, like, sweep you up and carry you away with, like, a poetic depiction of a love that seems to render all else obsolete, that, like, destroys so much, but turns that destruction into something new and huge and beautiful that alchemizes the pain and sorrow and anger and rage of heartbreak and the euphoria and ecstasy and majesty of love into something so much grander and sharper and more vivid than you can ever even begin to hope to imagine to even dream to experience in your own life. So this is for you Whitney. Lex wanted something like romantic and passionate so for him I am recommending Sula by Toni Morrison. I believe Lex's exact words were something about like the embodied joining of souls or something like that. I don't remember for sure but this book does some like really interesting stuff with like bodies and embodiment and really examines the way that both Nell and Sula like relate to each other and relate to like their community. I think the way that Morrison questions the relationship between like the self and the body and the self and the other is like both super interesting to like ponder and think about and also super compelling to read and how it looks at how people can have like such profound effects on us like and the ways that like those effects like reverberate through our lives beyond our direct interactions with those people. Like me and my friend from the fifth grade, Isaiah, who was like really tall and like really good at basketball. Like sometimes he would like invite me over to play basketball, but like I was really bad at basketball, even though I was kind of tall and people would always be like, oh my God, you're like so tall. You should be like really good at basketball. And I'd be like, I'm not even that tall. And that's not like what makes a person good at basketball. But like Isaiah would be like, we don't have to play basketball. And be like, oh my God, no, it's totally fine. You can totally play basketball. And he'd be like, cool. Thank you very much for doing that for me. Because I also think it's like really important that like, you know, that like, you don't have to be good at everything all the time. Like it's okay to just like do things for fun and like you don't have to be good at them. And that was like super life-changing for me. There was just like such like care and craft and like honestly like pure genius and talent. Like I cannot recommend Toni Morrison enough as an author. And I think this is like a great way to get into like her work. So Lex, this one's for you. So for Percy, I'm recommending It by Alexa Chung. Percy asked for kind of like a, a lifestyle book that would like guide us towards being like 
better and like more glamorous. And I think Alexa Chung can really do that in it. In it, she kind of goes through like her major influences and style icons in, in a way that really kind of like lays out a constellation of styles to like refer to. And seeing as Percy is like so insistent on giving out advice, even when it's not wanted, I think this book could really help him give some like clearer, better, less rude, more helpful advice and like introduce him to like a more cultured palette. This is definitely one of the books that I have reread most often because it is sort of like an unconventional biography of Alexa Chung and she is kind of living the dream. Like her parents got her a pony for real. So yeah, this book does have some questionable takes on Rihanna and the general air of privilege that you will have to kind of like get through, but it is a fun read, a great book to kind of like unplug for a minute. And it gives a great like visual reference for attempting to cultivate the absolutely unattainable aesthetic of someone who's both super rich and super pretty when you're like maybe not as rich or not as pretty. So Percy, this one's for you. So Sloan did not initially respond to my email. And then when I phoned him, he got really upset because he didn't give me his number. I had to get it from Grace. And even then she only gave it to me because I was crying because I will not let Sloan of all people be the reason that this video falls apart. Anyway, he was like, just do whatever. And I was like, thank you so much for trusting my judgment, Sloan. But that is actually like not at all the point of this video. And then he was like, I don't even look like to read. Of course, this is what you do. Cause he's kind of like the Pat of our channel. And I know you don't know Pat very well, but like, you know what, I'm like not gonna dedicate any more time or like brain space to like people who like really need to do a lot of work in their lives, which is totally valid and I totally understand, but like aren't doing that work. And like in the meantime, acting as like drains and like ciphers to all the people around them. So like eventually I did wear Sloan down and he was like, bunch, like do a book for like people who don't like to read or whatever. So for Sloan and the other people who don't like to read, I'm recommending Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. It is super long and I do find the language can be like pretty dense no matter like what translation you get. And there are some like really boring parts and like it can be like really kind of frustrating the first like three or four times you read it. But like I find by the time you get to like the sixth reading something just like clicks and it becomes like a super duper enriching experience. So like if you can get through to like the sixth reading of this book then like any other book will be like super duper easy and like you won't hate it. And sometimes you like have to work, right? Like, like life is not just about like things being like easy and like getting like easy payoffs and like finding happiness easily. Like sometimes life is hard, right? And like people are like mean and rude and take advantage of you and you work like really hard to try and get them to like you and then they don't like you specifically because you worked so hard and then they make fun of you for it. But like, it will all eventually come to good, right? That's really what reading Anna Karenina is about. It's not about like enjoying it or like finding peace or like doing what you want with your life. It's about like working really hard and like hard work being its own reward. So this is for you Sloan. So Gemma was really clear about what she wanted and what she wanted is The Hobbit. And that's it. I guess for my girl Gemma, I'm recommending The Hobbit. I've honestly never read it. Like I don't even own a copy of it because this one guy I went to middle school with named Wesley started reading it at school one time. And this other girl I went to school with named Charity was like making fun of him for it. And Charity's parents like a really big pool and she would throw these like really big pool parties at the end of every year. And also Wesley was like really weird and rude. Like if you're gonna be that weird, like at least be like nice, but he was like really standoffish and, and really rude. And he like stared at all the girls in our class. So like no one was gonna stand up Wesley and especially not to Charity so like when she started making fun of him for reading The Hobbit we all just like collectively unspokenly decided to not read The Hobbit so yeah I've never read it but I think this could be like a super fun adventure for all of us and don't worry a bird died in Charity's pool that year so like the pool party wasn't very fun and like three kids went home crying it turns out she wasn't even that nice so like I don't really care what she thinks anymore so this one's for you Gemma so yeah, drop any of your book recs down below along with any updates on like your Hobbit adventures. And while you're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning into my solo episode. It means so much to me and we'll see you all right back here next week. Bye. <laughs>